Hey friends, welcome back to Homestead on a Prayer. It's not so much of a beautiful day today. It certainly looks pretty out here, but it's been raining on and off today. So I had planned to film a garden tour today. So I'm going to do my best to fit this in in between rain showers. We had a rainy morning. We're supposed to have a rainy afternoon. So this garden tour may get cut short a little bit depending on if the weather holds out for us or not. But I definitely wanted to make sure to give you guys an update today because the garden is looking beautiful. Now there's still a lot of vegetables that aren't planted yet. We're still kind of in the early spring garden. Haven't really gotten into planting a lot of the summer vegetables yet, but a lot of the flowers are blooming and I definitely did not want to miss out on the chance to show you guys a lot of those flowers. So as you can see, we're starting out in the new garden expansion. You can see that we did get our arch trellis installed, the first one. There's going to actually be a second one between those two beds over there. We're going to hopefully install that over the next couple days and then there will actually be a third one but that one's a little bit a little ways off so i know you can probably hear my chickens in the background they anxiously want to get out of that coop. but with the way the predator pressure has been here lately i don't really feel comfortable just letting them out to free range unless i'm out with them since i'm probably going to have to run inside in a few minutes to avoid getting rained on unfortunately those ladies are going to have to stay in for now at least now there's a lot of progress that we've made on the side yard garden since the last time we did a garden tour so it doesn't actually look like all that much yet. But you can see in this bed here, I've got some onions planted around the edges. I've got little bits of Swiss chard, some chamomile, and some other little seedlings just starting to come so up. this bed is going to end up being kind of a hodgepodge this season. This is ultimately going to be a garlic bed, but since garlic doesn't get planted until fall, I'm going to be growing some other, other vegetables in this garden in the meantime. So I don't think that we'll really know exactly what's going to be in this bed until it actually gets planted. But I know along this arch trellis, I am planning on growing probably both some honey nut squash and some butternut squash. And once we're past our last frost date, I'm planning to put a couple cherry tomatoes and kind of mix in some more companion plants along with the plants we have growing. I also have sowed quite a few carrot seeds. I'm growing, or I'm attempting to grow this year, an orange carrot variety called New Corota and a yellow carrot variety called Uzbek Golden Carrot. Both of those are new to me, but they both sound excellent, so I'm excited to try those. I just sowed those a few days ago, and I don't see any germination yet, but pretty soon we should get some germination. Now over here on the other side of this trellis, we have the potato bed. Now I don't know if you guys caught my video about planting potatoes or not, but you can see I have some potatoes that are a little bit crazy looking. So the potatoes that are really crazily sprouting up out of the ground are gold potatoes that actually I had purchased a bulk order of organic gold potatoes for eating and I set aside a few to plant. You can see Milo is going to be joining us on this garden tour kind of in and out as he as he pleases I guess. So I had set aside some of those gold potatoes to save for planting and kind of lost track of them as I sat in my garage waiting to be planted. They obviously sprouted pretty enthusiastically and I'm not sure how well those will do but we did go ahead and plant those to see just to see how they'll do. So definitely stick around and see how those do as the season goes on. I'm gonna keep you guys updated about that. On this other side of the potato bed here, I have red potatoes planted. And actually, basically three quarters of this bed is red potatoes. Red potatoes had sprouted, but they're a little more subdued and more what you expect your potatoes to look like for planting. So I have a little bit higher hopes for those, but we're definitely going to give both of them a try and see how they do as the season goes on. Now in this bed over here, I just planted strawberries. We got some bare root strawberries in the mail. As you can see, they do have a little bit of green leafy growth. They don't really look like much yet, but pretty soon they will. So I did just plant these strawberries about two days ago, along with our asparagus crowns that also came in the mail. I do have a video filmed about planting the strawberries and asparagus. I think that will probably be the next video you see. I'm not 100% sure which order those videos will be released in, but you've either already seen that one or else you'll be seeing it soon. Now along with these strawberries, I did interplant some seeds for a few companion plants. I didn't go too crazy because I don't want to crowd out my strawberries, but I did plant a few seeds for a few more carrots of the same two varieties that we already mentioned, the new Corota and the golden Uzbek carrots, as well as some um, golden bush beans. So we have those in there. I put in a couple seeds for borage and a few other companion plants. I honestly can't remember completely what. I think nasturtium and cosmos, but I guess we will all be surprised together when those come up. So over here by my blackberries, I put some random chamomile starts kind of interspersed with the blackberries and I'm hoping that those will do well. 
Those chamomile starts were part of my winter sewing experiment, so I actually started those in a milk jug on my deck. Chamomile, I will say, was one of the better successes from that experiment. So if you're interested in trying winter sewing, chamomile is a great one to start. That did really well for me. Also, the Swiss chard that I showed you over in the onion bed, those were winter sewn as well, and those seem to do well also. I had kind of mixed results with that experiment, so I'll probably do it again, but I'll probably focus more on the plants that were successful. It is nice to have some space freed up under the grow lights and be able to start some seeds that way. Now you can see my crab apple tree is really putting on a show and then we've got a little mini crab apple back there. So there's always a week or two every spring when this tree is really beautiful. This bed here isn't planted yet. This is going to be sweet potatoes. It's way too cold for those so those will be planted out a little later. Then over here across the path, we planted the asparagus that I mentioned. So in this big, long, skinny asparagus bed, I planted two asparagus varieties. We have a green millennium asparagus and purple passion asparagus. Those were just planted a couple days ago, so I'm not really seeing any signs of growth above the soil yet, but I'm hoping that those will be successful. I have been wanting to plant asparagus for a few years and I just hadn't gotten to it yet. And I really wish that I had gotten to it a couple years ago because now I could be harvesting it this spring. But you know, it is what it is and now we are investing in our future asparagus harvest. Now the final raised bed that I ordered came in. You can see it's a little bit smaller than the others. I got that all installed. I'm still figuring out exactly how I'm going to lay this out along with the stone wall. So what I'm leaning towards when it comes to this bed is to set it back from the stone wall a little bit on both sides. It's in the corner, so it's going to have the stone wall around it on both on two sides. So I'm thinking if I set it back far enough that I can lay out some one foot by one foot square pavers right next to it and then still have a little strip of land in between the pavers and the stone wall. Then the pavers will give me a walking path around it and I won't have to worry about butting them right up to the stone wall because we'll have that little kind of buffer strip there. And then within that buffer, I'm planning on planting some things like lavender, thyme, probably a lot of herbs or maybe a few perennial flowers like a catmint, an epita or something like that. I'll definitely keep you updated as I decide what to do with that. That's the reason I haven't gone ahead and leveled this bed and set it in place yet because I'm still trying to finalize my exact plan. But I did mention that there will be a third cattle panel trellis and that is going to go between the asparagus bed and this raised bed once we get it finally installed. Then of course we'll be finishing laying out all the pathways and covering those with wood chips and then that side yard garden bed should be really done. So I just wanted to give you the update on how that looks so far. So I am in a race against the clock and against the weather here. So we're probably not going to cover everything today. A lot of what we want to look at hasn't really changed since the last time we did a tour. But I do want to show you a couple things in this side of the yard. So here's my pink currant bush. Last time we did a garden tour, I had mentioned that it had some bud clusters. Those buds have now opened. It's flowering. So I'm thinking we'll be getting some pink currants this year, which is pretty exciting. Over here, my elderberries. You can see we had some really small bud clusters last time we were over here. But they're definitely starting to get closer to blooming. So thinking it's looking more and more likely we'll get elderberries this year. All right, we're gonna head over to the main garden area, but I just wanted to show you guys how beautiful my lemon balm is looking coming up. This is the Limoncello Lemon Balm from Baker Creek. It's supposed to have a stronger lemon scent than regular lemon balm. And I haven't harvested any of it to try yet, but it does smell amazing. Now you can see my creeping phlox looks really beautiful. The lemon balm clumps are right behind this creeping phlox. My hope is that eventually, the lemon balm will spread to really take up that whole area in front of the fence and then we'll be able to have an abundant harvest for it. Lemon balm makes a delicious tea, it's a relaxing tea, has a lot of really good medicinal properties, so it's definitely something to look into. Now last year along this fence I had the lemon balm, but it was much smaller. But you can see even so, I still have quite a bit of space between lemon balm plants. So last year what I ended up doing was planting a few of my extra cucumbers along this fence and they actually did surprisingly well. So I am gonna go ahead and do that again this year, I think. All right, so I feel the raindrops starting ever so slightly. So we are going to leave behind the side yard garden. I'm gonna go into the main garden and I'm just gonna give you a really quick update of what's growing in there. 
So as you can see, the peas are doing really well. They're really coming in nice and thickly. Well, for the most part, nice and thickly. I see a few spots where they didn't germinate. So I think in the next couple days, I'm gonna to try to come out here and replant some seeds just in the spot where they didn't germinate. Now, interestingly, if you've been following along with my pea soaking experiment, I'm sure you're interested to hear some more updated results on that. Now, I have those bare spots on both the side of the fence where I soaked the peas and the side of the fence where I didn't soak the peas. This is Milo again, in case you're wondering what that little black thing is. It's Milo's tail. He's gotta be, he's just gotta say hi to everybody. So I do have some, a little bit of spotty germination. Overall, I did get really good germination on both the peas that I soaked and the peas that I didn't soak. But there were some spots where peas didn't germinate on both the soaked part and the unsoaked part. So I think I'm just gonna come out here and sow a couple more seeds. That will give us a little bonus harvest of peas after the other ones have kind of started to slow down. So as we head over to the main garden gate, you can see more peas over here. Got some chives, other herbs. My oregano is really waking up and looking really good. So let's head on into the garden. I'm going to go in Milo. So as you can see, there's quite a bit of the garden that isn't planted yet. That's because our last frost date hasn't passed yet. So for today, we'll just focus on what is planted and growing. In here, you can see my broccoli. Let me just pull this cover back for you so you can see it a little more clearly. So in this bed, I have 12 broccoli plants planted. I've got nine Eastern Magic plants and then at the end there's three Romanesco broccoli plants. So Romanesco is new to me, but I've heard amazing things about it. I have a friend that has been trying to get me to try it for a while. She actually sent me seeds for this plant. So I'm really excited to try it. Now I've seen Romanesco listed as a broccoli and I've also seen it listed as a cauliflower. I don't really know exactly which category it fits into. I mean, broccoli and cauliflower are cousins after all, so I guess it could be some third cousin in that group. So either way, all these broccoli plants are looking really good. I think I'm happy with how they look and they've grown quite a bit since our last garden tour. Now you can see that I have companion planted some lettuce in between all these broccoli plants here. I had some sporadic germination over here, so I replanted and you can see some of them are starting to come up. There's a few of the red ones, which I think must be what I had originally planted here. But over here, over here you can see some other spotty germination that's now starting to fill in. And yeah, lots of, lots of lettuce and I've got some pak choy back there. So I interplanted all of those lettuce plants and greens along with this broccoli for a couple reasons. One is that this broccoli, while it will ultimately grow into really large plants, as you can see right now, they're still really seedlings. There's a lot of space in between them and filling in that space gives me a couple benefits. One is that I obviously get more harvest. I make better use of that space. So. By filling in that space, I'm going to get a little bit extra lettuce, which is a great thing. Now, also what that does is once the lettuce really fills in and gets going, it's going to provide a little bit of a living mulch for my broccoli, which will really help the broccoli because it'll help conserve soil moisture. You know, when you have plants shading out the soil, it's the same principle as if you would use actual mulch like straw or something like that. It conserves soil moisture because it shades the soil and prevents the sun from evaporating all of that moisture. Also, as these broccoli plants grow, they're going to help the lettuce in turn because lettuce is really a spring crop, maybe an early summer crop in my area. It doesn't do well once it gets really hot. And by having the broccoli grow around it, once the broccoli gets large, it's going to provide some shade to the lettuce, which should, in theory, help me to be able to harvest lettuce a little bit longer into my growing season. All right, it's really starting to rain now, so we're just going to race through the rest of this garden. We're gonna talk about what we have growing as quickly as we can and then get inside for some cover. So garlic is looking great. I'm seeing some good growth. Not really much significant new to talk about there, but just an update, it's looking good. As we go past the garlic, you can see my radishes. Those are growing nicely. You can see they're starting to, yes, Milo wants some radishes. You can see it's starting to bulb up a little bit. Those aren't ready yet, but it shouldn't be too much longer. So over here in the back corner of the garden, you can see, well, you can see back along the fence, there's some more peas growing back here too. But along the back of this garden bed, there's some parsley seedlings that I transplanted out. Those are looking really good. And we also have some chamomile that we planted over here too. Some dill that I sowed, I direct sowed the dill in this garden and that's all coming up really well. So there's a little better look at the parsley. Here's a better look at Milo. You wanna say hi, Milo? Milo wants to say hi. Here's a little bit of that chamomile. And then 
Back there, you can see some tiny dill seedlings coming up. So over here, you can see my other brassica bed, which has in it some cauliflower plants. It has a couple kinds of cabbage and several types of kale. They're all looking really good. I'm gonna to try to uncover these real quick and give you a quick update. So you can see this cauliflower, this is gonna be my prize cauliflower. That one by far looks the best. I've got a few others that look okay, but this is the one I'm most hopeful for. Now you can see this big spiky kale here. This actually overwintered from last year. So I might harvest some of these little bud clusters and eat these like tiny broccoli florets. Back there, you can see another one from last year. But you can see there's a, several types of kale through here. There's some cabbage through here. This one looks really nice. I'm really happy with how that looks. So we'll finish with this for today. This will be our grand finale for the day. This is my bed of various lettuces and greens that are growing. So we'll take a look inside this tunnel too. So if you saw my last garden tour, which I think I filmed about two weeks ago, you can see that we've had some really good lettuce growth in the meantime, for the most part. I have a couple varieties of lettuce that didn't germinate that well. So I'm not sure if that happened because I didn't store the seed correctly. Maybe the seed was just a little bit old in some cases, or there were just conditions that were more favorable to one variety of lettuce than another. But the lettuce varieties that germinated really sporadically, or I think in one or two cases, not at all, I did re-sow some lettuce seeds there, so we should be getting some more germination on those soon. In fact, I do see some little ones that have just started. So you can see here this variety, which looks like it says freckles. This is freckles lettuce. I have a few that germinated and looked really good, but there was a sporadic germination, so there's some tiny little babies that I just planted. This one I'm really excited about. This is super red romaine, and that looks really good and beautiful. Over here I have butter crunch, which is my favorite lettuce variety. You can see I planted a lot of it. There were a couple clumps that didn't germinate here, so I re-sowed those and those are starting to germinate so too. So lettuce is a great plant for succession sowing. Even if you don't have issues with germination, it's a really great idea to re-sow new lettuce seeds probably every couple weeks during your growing season because lettuce is one of those crops that does tend to bolt easily, which means it goes to seed easily. And when that happens, you're going to have lowered leaf production and more bitter flavor. So you definitely want to keep a supply of fresh lettuce going as long as you can. Once it gets really hot in most areas anyway, lettuce doesn't really like to germinate and grow anymore. But I do try to keep a good lettuce supply and a good variety of lettuce supply going as long as I can. Over here, this guy's kind of hiding in the netting. But look at this beautiful lettuce. This lettuce plant overwintered. I actually planted this last fall and it survived the winter. It was really tiny. But now as the season's warming up, it's really growing fast. So I could probably actually start harvesting on this lettuce if I wanted to. Probably not enough for a full salad, but if I just take a leaf off and put it on a sandwich or a burger, it's great for that right now. Now one thing I will say about that lettuce, that lettuce has shown that it is really happy in my climate. It survived the winter. I did have plastic covering this bed over the winter, but even with that light layer of protection, that was enough for it to survive when a lot of other lettuces did not survive. So one thing I'm going to do is I'm going to harvest on this lettuce as much as I can during the early growing season. Once that lettuce bolts and starts to go to seed, I'm gonna make sure that I save seeds from that lettuce. If you save your own seeds from plants that you grow in your garden, basically what you're doing is you are selecting for the best plants that are most adapted to your region. Now this particular lettuce, this is not the only one of this variety that I had planted. I planted multiple lettuces of this variety, but this particular plant showed that it does really well in my climate. So by saving seeds from that plant, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create more offspring, which should in theory also do well in my climate. From those, I'll choose the best to save seeds from. And over time, you can kind of develop your own customized strain of lettuce or whatever vegetable that really does well in your environment. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me and taking a little tour of my spring garden. I know it's not the full glory that it will be this summer, but I'm still really happy with how it looks. It is raining for real now, so I'm gonna go ahead and get these beds covered as quick as I can, and then I'm gonna run inside. I hope you guys are having a great day, and I can't wait to see you again soon. Bye guys, I'll see you next time.